All right. Welcome to, the, to today's Alignment Flow class. Uh, we'll be working with Baddha Konasana, uh, which is bound angle pose. If you are anything like me, this posture can seem easy to other people. But for those of you that have tight hips, um, this posture uh, becomes a little bit more difficult. Uh, so today through our flow, we're going to get into the tilt of the pelvis, which really helps out in bound angle pose because there is a slight tilt for us to lean forward to really uh, get the benefits of the stretch. And uh, we'll be working a lot with all of the muscles that surround our hips to really see how the pelvis is stabilized and how those different muscles surrounding the hips uh, can be engaged in order to feel the stretch in a certain way. So to get started, we'll just let the feet plant in front of you. Let's go back just a little bit. Let the feet plant in front of you. Let the hands come behind you. They can be fingertips facing away from the body. You just want to take those shoulders and squeeze the shoulder blades together. Let the chest shine up towards the ceiling. Maybe just look slightly up. Maybe not all the way up, but just slightly up. And then take those feet a little bit wider than your hips. So from here, we're gonna just get into our hips and really find some movement here. So the chest is shining. And we're just gonna take the knees over to the right and then come back to center and then over to the left and come back to center. Think about those shoulder blades squeezing together, maybe connecting breath to movement. Exhale, you go down. Inhale, you come up. Exhale, you go down. Just beginning to realize and stretch into those hips just to get started here, just to warm up. Doing this two more times, connecting breath to movement. Inhale, you come up. Exhale, you lower down. Inhale, you come up. Exhale, you lower down to the other side. One last time through on each side here. And then slowly begin to take the feet a little bit wider apart. Think about those shoulder blades still squeezing together, the chest shining, belly button to spine, engage your core. And this time we're going to let the legs fall completely over to the right. And then inhale, come back to center. And let the legs completely fall over to the left. Knees should be down, the whole entire leg should be down. Maybe your right hip is lifting up. And then inhale, draw the legs back to center. Exhale over to the other side. Doing this two more times. Connecting that breath to movement, really beginning to get into those hips, opening up. Once you come back to center, this time we'll have the knees fall over to the right. We'll add in some dynamic moving. You might need to move the arm back just slightly. And we're going to press into the left hip as we lift that left hip up, or left shin is what I meant, and let the left hand come behind you. Fingertips lifting, feel that stretch, that arching in the spine, and then exhale, lower down. Let that left hand come to plant, knees come up to center. Take those knees over to the left as you push into the right shin, lift the hips up this way. So that right arm is reaching up overhead. And then exhale, slowly lower down. Two more times with this right hand, plants behind, legs come up to center, fall over to the right. Right hips lift, left hips lift. Good. And then over to the other side. Right shin plants, left leg lifts. Good. Maybe on this last time through, adding on just a little bit, taking this dynamic even deeper, maybe that right shin plants as the left leg extends up, finding a rounded wild thing. And then exhale, lower down the hips. Take the knees over to the left, left hand plants, left shin grounds down, right leg extends, rounded wild thing. Exhale, lower down. The right hand plants behind. Maybe this time you keep both of those knees lifted up as you reach the left hand behind and extend into full wild thing. 
or maybe you keep it to ground it. Knowing what works best for your body right now, move over to the left side, extend those hips up, find either a grounded wild thing or a full wild thing, and then exhale, lower down. Good. From here, you can just cross the legs. Find that dominant leg on top. Think about removing the flesh away from those sit bones, sitting up as tall as you can. Think about the knees falling down to the ground. This is a great spot for you to grab that blanket and put it underneath you to support those hips if it's not there already. Or uh, without it, that's completely fine. Take those hands to the knees, take those shoulder blades back into, the into their pockets. So letting them rest, finding space between your ears and your shoulders. And then from here, we're gonna start some body rolls. So inhale, we're going to go forward to the right and extend the neck long as we come through center. And as we go over to the left, tuck your chin into your chest, round your spine. Inhale, come forward to the right, extend that chin up towards the ceiling. And then exhale, press over to the left, round the chin in towards the chest, round the spine. Two more times here, just finding that rotation, letting this feel good. Notice what connections happen in the ground as you roll. As you press into one hip to the other to get it to roll. And on that last time through, come back to center. And then we'll go to the other side. So now going over to the left, chins lifted. Exhale over to the right, chin tucks and round. Three more times with this. Opposite direction. Just really beginning to connect body to breath movement. And on the last time through, just meeting back at that center. Good. From here, we'll take that right hand just down by the side. Keep it a little bit closer to the body here. We're going to bend at that elbow so that the hand plants down. Take that left hand, reach it up overhead. Think about the shoulder softening back. So the arm's going to lower just a little bit as we're trying to extend up. There should be like a tug pull sensation happening in that shoulder blade. Think about the neck being free as you bend into that right elbow and reach the left arm up and over. Think about both of your hips planting into the mat. If you're getting like a crunch on your right side, maybe extend the elbow just a little bit instead of bending so deeply into that elbow. Just finding that space in between, squeezing those shoulder blades slightly together. Inhale, think about where your head is at in space. Letting it be free for movement. And then find a space to look at, maybe down towards the ground or up towards the ceiling. Think about that pinky extending all the way over. Feel that stretch. Squeeze those shoulder blades together. Inhale, come back to center. Let that left hand come down a little bit closer to the body. As the right hand comes up, exhale, let that shoulder sink into its pocket. Inhale, bend into that left elbow as the right hand reaches. If you're getting that crunching sensation, just press into the arm a little bit, the hand a little bit more to find length. And then think about that neck being free, the head being free. You should be able to twist and turn and then find a space to look at, either up towards the ceiling or down towards the ground. Squeeze those shoulder blades together, extending from pinky all the way to hip. And then exhale, rise up. Let that right hand fall down. From here, just let your fingertips come over to the side. So we're on our fingertips here, like cupcakes underneath our hands, and we're not trying to snatch them. So we're up on the fingertips of all of our fingers. And then think about those shoulder blades just squeezing together slightly, the chest shining forward. Good. Pull the belly and ribs in. Find a neutral spine here that's active. Inhale. On your exhale, take the left hand to the right knee. Take the right hand behind. Exhale, twist side. So right hand comes to left knee, left hand comes behind. Exhale here, exhale. Inhale, come back to center and switch. Exhale, inhale, come back to center and switch. One last time through, inhale, come back and switch. Exhale, 
Inhale, come back and switch. Good, this next time on that right side, hold it there. Inhale, come back, switch for the exhale. Inhale, and then exhale, slowly come back, switch one last time, hold it here for a breath. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, come back to center. From here, you'll plant your hands over to the side or in front of you and make your way into a tabletop position, however you'd like to get there. Right here, just find a moment to find your foundation. So think about your fingers spread wide, those fingertips pressing into the mat. The palms of the hands and the fingers are all active here, pressing down. This should create a, a press down to lift up in between the shoulder blades, puffing up in between. Think about your gaze being slightly forward and draw the ribs and belly inward. This should create a flat back here, or maybe just slightly puffed. The tailbone is slightly tucked, not really tucked, but slightly. Good, finding this foundation. Think about how active you are here. And then inhale, drop your belly, lift your chin. Think about pressing just slightly forward to slide your collarbone and your sternum in between your arms. And then exhale, push and round the spine, up that tailbone. Think about pressing equally into your hands as into your knees. So we're not trying to press forward, we're really trying to keep it equal on our hands and our knees throughout. Inhale, drop the belly, lift the chin. Same thing here, just pressing equally and just slightly forward. And then exhale, round. Take about two to three more breaths to find this cat cow. Maybe adding in whatever movements feel good to you. Maybe a side to side. Maybe a press back. And a press even more slightly forward. Whatever works, just connecting that breath to that movement, not paying attention to how you look, but how you're moving and how it feels within your body. Last breath here, wherever you're at, big inhale, big exhale. And then inhale, meeting back at that neutral spine, Pressing them out away, belly button and ribs draw in. Exhale, curl the back toes under. On your inhale, bend the knees deeply in towards the chest as you press the mat away and push back. You should be on the tippy toes right here. Your heels should be lifted, drawing your knees in towards your chest. Exhale, wherever you're at. On your inhale, see if you can lift the hips even higher. Exhale, try to straighten the legs and then lower down the heels. You should feel this stretch in maybe your calves and your hamstrings. From here, maybe you just pedal out your feet. Really think about the space in between your shoulder blades. So the shoulder blades are trying to draw apart while trying to push back into that tailbone. So the head shouldn't be scrunched up by your ears. There should really be space for your head to rock side to side with ease and comfort. Draw the belly button in towards the spine, pull those ribs in and try to send the hips back. Back and up, good. And then think about that space in between your shoulder blades, that head drawing down, good. Two more paddles out with the feet. and then meeting back at a neutral downward dog. Inhale, look forward. On your exhale, begin to tiptoe up to those hands. Keep the hips lifted up high as you bend the knees to take those feet to your hands. So the knees are bent. You're trying to take the knees over your ankles. Your hips are slightly back. You're trying to get your ribs and belly over those legs. So maybe bending really deep here, and then trying to press those hip, hips up towards the ceiling. Think about where you're pressing into your feet. If you're really putting your weight on the outsides of the feet, try to draw it evenly between the outsides of the feet to the inside arches. 
Notice how that engagement affects the stance. We're trying to widen the space in between our hips here. So really think about your legs being like uh, two positive magnets that are pressing away from each other while being active. If you're like, what the heck are you talking about? Just keep hanging out in your forward fold. Maybe grab opposite elbows, rock side to side, swaying back and forth, letting that feel good. And then kneading back at center, press down through your feet. Make sure you're not putting the weight on the outside of the feet or on the inside. They're really equal here. Plant your left hand down, bend your left knee deeply, and try to straighten your right leg as much as you can. From here, let that right hand peel open up towards the ceiling. Think about if you're pressing your weight back and really try to press it forward onto those toes. That should really engage the stretch into the right hip space. Your left heel can even come up off, to the, off the ground so you're on the tippy toes, finding space. And then take that right hand and place it on that left hip. Think about pressing just slightly forward, finding that stretch all across the IT band, deeply into that hip space. One more deep breath in here. And then on the exhale, lower the right hand down to the ground. Bend into the right knee and we'll switch sides. You can even lift the right heel up, plant the right hand or come up onto those fingertips and reach that left hand high to the sky. Really think about where your weight is being distributed. We're not trying to sink back in the hips. We're really trying to press evenly here. One more deep breath in. Take that left hand down to the left hip. Find space. And then exhale, lower the left hip down. From here, it might feel good to just pedal out the feet. Good. And then exhale, knee back at a neutral, forward fold, non-moving. Inhale, halfway lift, create that number seven. Tuck those shoulder blades into the pocket. The hips are slightly back. The knees are bent. And then exhale, fold. Inhale, slowly, slowly. Press down through the feet. Straighten the legs. And then round the spine up to standing. Shoulder blades come, our shoulders come up to the ears. And then down the back for those shoulder blades to plug in. Good. This next little thing that we'll talk about here is gonna get just a little bit weird. So uh, stick with me, I promise you it'll make sense. So we're gonna talk about the tilt in our pelvis, right? So this tilt in our pelvis, you wanna stand up nice and tall, press the feet equally to the inside and outside of the arches. And then from here, just think about pressing the hips slightly forward. Your glutes are gonna engage. We're not trying to like squeeze or crack nuts with our butt cheeks, but really try to just softly engage those glutes on the outside at like 50%. This should press the hips slightly forward so that the inner thighs start to roll outward. Yep, good. Inhale here, pull the belly button and ribs in. And then on your exhale, put a soft bend at the knees and try to tilt the pelvis down. This is going to lift the tailbone up. There will be a soft arch in your back here. Good. And then inhale, squeeze the glute, press the hips forward, the inner thighs roll out. Good. Exhale, tilt the pelvis down, press those hips down to the ground. So like the points of your hips are pointed down, there might be a soft bend at your knees. That tailbone is really reaching back and there's a slight arch in your spine. Good. And then inhale, press it forward, engage the glutes. Good. Last time through, exhale, tilt the pelvis. So think about pressing those hips back so that the tailbone can really reach up. Small arch in the back. Yep. And lead with the chest. And then inhale, press it forward. Glutes squeeze just slightly. Hips are pressing. Our inner thighs are rolling outward. Good. Now we'll add on coming into um, that half forward fold, that creating that seven with our body. 
So right here, inhale, exhale, begin to tilt the pelvis. I want you to bend into the knees as you lead with the chest. Good. I want you to bend over halfway and then take those hands to your quads. Your quads should be engaged here. So really feel those quads fire up. Think about that tailbone is reaching back and the crown of your head is reaching forward. Take a deep breath in. And then on your exhale, we're going to try to take our chest down to our knees, looking down at the ground, let our hands come down to the ground. Good, you should feel the stretch in the hamstrings. Think about those, those knees being like magnets, two positive magnets pressing away, finding space for the back of the hips. Exhale, let that head hang heavy. Inhale, come up halfway, those knees bend, hands come to the quads, quads are engaged, hips are back, chest is shining forward. Yes. We're working it out here. Exhale, fold over. Head down, arms hanging. Last time, inhale, press down through your feet, tailbone back, hands on quads. And then this time, exhale, fold completely over. When you get all the way to the bottom, just try to straighten your legs. Yeah, good. This time, inhale, rise all the way up to standing. Arms come up overhead. And exhale, fold. Or sorry, exhale, hands to heart center. Not fold, don't fold. <laughs> Good. So that's the tilt in the pelvis that is needed for Baddha Konasana, bound angle pose. There's a slight tilt that needs to happen in those hips. So now that we've got the tilt, we're gonna work on a little bit more of the muscles that are surrounding the hips and the ways that we can engage them in order to find a deeper stretch for our Baddha Konasana. So from here, inhale those arms up overhead, press down through your feet. And then exhale, bend at your knees, send those hips back, fold over. Inhale, halfway lift, hands come to thighs. Exhale, fold, plant the hands, step your right foot back. Think about heel toeing, not heel toeing, but wiggling on those toes to take that right foot back. So you really want to create space in between the feet here. Think about pressing those hands into the mat. If they can't be flat, you can always come up onto the fingertips here. Inhale, look forward. Try to keep a straight spine. And then on your exhale, we're going to hover, bend that knee and hover that knee above the mat. Inhale, extend long. Exhale, bend and hover. Feel those uh, glutes engage here as you begin to pick that knee up and straighten. Good, one last time, exhale, hover the top, and inhale, straighten. This time, exhale, lower that knee all the way down, uncurl the back toes, inhale, pick those hands up, sweep them over your head. Onto the asana, pull those bottom ribs in, soften, soften the shoulders, broaden across your collarbones, Inhale. On your exhale, take your hands inside of the left foot. Curl the back toe under, lift the back knee. We'll take these hands and walk them to the long edge of the mat so that we're in like a wide-legged forward fold. So pivot on your left foot so that all 10 toes face the wide-legged edge of the mat. Inhale. Exhale, just softly fold in. Inhale, lift up halfway, straighten those arms. Exhale, take your hands to your hips, and then inhale, rise all the way up. Good. From here, think about your heels going slightly and your toes going out, right? So we want it at like a 30 degree angle. You might need to change this a little bit more as we begin to, begin to work dynamically on engaging the hip muscles. So take your hands to your hips, and then think about your hands going to those glutes or those butt, right on the side, right where your thigh or your femur bone meets your, meets your hips, right? So you can feel that engagement in your glutes. Softly squeeze those glutes together. Feel how that presses your hips slightly forward, right? 
So you want that engagement to continue in your glutes. We're going to add on dynamically here. So bend into that left knee. As you bend into that left knee, feel that glute still engage on the left side and send the knee out towards your toes. Think about the knee trying to press back. So we're at like a variation of a warrior two almost with the legs. Yeah, and then think about your hips pressing forward. So your shoulders are gonna stack over your hips. Yeah, beautiful. Now come back to center. And the same thing on the other side. Bend into that back knee, that right knee. Pull the knee back, draw the knee back. Keep the spine straight. And that glute, that left glute is, or right glute is engaging along with that left glute, right? We're squeezing those glutes to keep the hips over the shoulders, shoulders over hips. Inhale back to center. Exhale, let's go a little bit deeper. So send that knee past the foot. Yeah. Try to keep the, the shoulders stacked over the hips. Yep, and come back to center. Exhale, bend into that right knee. And back to center. And then to the left, bending a little bit deeper. Maybe this time the hands come down to the ground. Notice how this is kind of like a forward fold. That spine is straight here. And then exhale, begin to lift up all the way up. And then bend into that right knee. Maybe those hands come down. Good. Inhale, come back to center. Exhale, take your hands to your hips. Turn those toes back in to line up with the heels. Maybe the toes are just slightly a pinch out side of the heels. And then find that tilt in your pelvis. So press the tailbone back, lead with the chest forward. As you hinge at the hips, leading with your chest, draw your belly button in. And then exhale when you pull it as far as you can, take those hands down to the ground. Think about leading with your head so your gaze is down in between your hands. Try to lower your head down to the ground. See if putting a micro bend in your knees helps you engage. Feel the back of your hips begin to open up. Feel those hamstrings, the back of your thighs begin to open up. One more deep breath in. One more deep breath out. And then on your inhale, begin to straighten the legs if they're not already. As you walk your hands to the right foot, back of the room, turn so all 10 toes face towards the back of the room. Now we're in that runner's lunge at the back. You're either up on your fingertips or hands are planted down on the ground. There's space in between your feet. Inhale, exhale, hover that knee above the mat, bend the knee. Inhale, extend up. Exhale, bend and hover. Inhale, extend up. Exhale, bend and hover. Two more times with this. On pace, on movement. And then straightening that leg once more. This time on your exhale, bend the knee, uncurl the toes. Inhale, sweep the arms up overhead. The glute is also engaged here as the hips rise up. Stacking your hip over that back knee and then slightly bending into that right knee. Inhale, soften the shoulders. Exhale, hands come inside of the foot. Curl the back toe under, lift the back knee, and now we're back in that wide-legged fold. From here, inhale. Exhale, just fold deeply. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, hands to hips. Inhale, rise all the way up. Good. Wide-legged fold here. Turn the toes slightly out, the heels slightly in. Deep breath in. Think about drawing those ribs and those glutes engage here to press the hips forward. And then bend and drive that knee out to the left side. The knee is pressing back towards the back of the room. And then see if we can take the hands inside of the leg. From here, see if you can turn that uh, back foot, the right foot, so that the toes point up. And then exhale, lower that right foot, walk back to center, and then back to the right, maybe the left toes point up. 
Good, feeling that stretch on the inner thigh. And then exhale, slowly lifting up. Walk the hands towards the left foot, the front of the room. From here, step your left foot back to meet the right. And then send the hips up high, downward dog. Good. From here, just pedal out the feet. Get some movement into those legs. And one more deep breath in. One more deep breath out. Inhale, lower down to the knees. Kiss the big toes together, spread the knees wide, send the hips back to the heels, child's pose. Finding just a breath or two to find space. Maybe even put a little wag in your hips, rocking side to side. And then press those hands into the mat and push yourself up to a tabletop position. So from here, we have worked on the tilt of the puzzle, the pelvis, the, the muscles that are engaged in our hips in order to get deeper into the stretch. So now we're going to build some muscles in our uh, glutes, and then we'll stretch it all out. So come back into your tabletop, spread the fingers wide, press the fingertips into the mat, push them out of the way, engage the belly, pull it, draw it in towards the spine. And from here, let your right leg float back in space. Extend it back. Good. From here, just find some soft up and down movements. Think about that belly being engaged. Don't sink yourself in. Really draw and push them out of the way. Belly's engaged here. Soft little flutters. Barely even moving. Just finding some soft movement with that leg. You should really find it firing up here all along. One more deep breath. Inhale. And then exhale, draw the right knee back in. Keep that knee hovered off the mat. Think about the belly button pushing in towards the spine, puffing up that place. And we're gonna do some fire hydrants here. So take that right knee over to the side, extend it up, and then meet the knees back together. Extend it up, meet them back together. Extend and meet. Extend and meet. Two, one, and last one. Let it come down. Think about maybe pressing through like a half child's pose, maybe pressing up just slightly, maybe just rocking side to side with those hips. Getting some movement, letting that go. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side. Press those hands into the mat, draw the belly button and ribs in, and extend your left leg out in space. Think about the belly button drawing in, you're pressing them out of the way, and then start those soft little movements with your leg. So it's a kick up and down, maybe a small little circle. Just a soft movement. We're not trying to like create big circles here. Just Soft, subtle flutters. The leg can, the toes can be extended or pointing down towards the ground. Pick one and stick with it. And we'll do this for five, four, three, two, one. Draw that knee in to meet the other. Hover that knee above the mat. And now we'll go into those fire hydrant kicks with the left. Leg. Exhale, press them out of the way, fire up your belly, and then inhale to lift it up. Exhale, draw it back in. Inhale, lift that knee up. Exhale, draw it back in. Inhale, lift it up. And four, three, two, one. Last one here, zero, and done. All right, nice job, guys. I'm breaking out into a sweat. I don't know about you. Find some soft circles with those hips. Let those feel good. We got two more. 
Nice little workouts before we get into those stretches. This next one here, maybe you need a blanket. Um, for your pubic bone, we're going to be laying on our belly and doing some flutter kicks with our legs. Uh, I know this feels better for me to have a blanket underneath just to support my, my hips from pressing all the way down into the ground. So lay down on that belly. Let your hands bend at the elbows and your hands meet for a pillow for your forehead or your chin. Think about the legs being extended back. For this one, you're gonna want the toes to be pointed. Knowing that this won't last forever, right? So just find your breath, catch your breath, take a few deep breaths in. Exhale, letting it go. One more deep breath in. Exhale, letting it go. And then inhale, keep that head or chin down on the hands. So extend the legs out behind you, lift the leg. Good. From here, we're going to just take the legs out away from each other and then draw them back in. Out away from each other, draw them back in. This won't last forever, I promise. Draw them out, draw them back in, press them out, draw them back in. Five, four, three. Two, one, lower down. Holy cow. All right. Woo. Not about you, but the sides of my glutes are burning. All right. From here, we'll go into that last exercise. Press your hands into the mat. And then gently begin to press up into tabletop. You can take that blanket, move it over to the side. And then swing the legs over to one side to send the hips down to the ground. We're going to make our way onto our backs. So the knees bend. Those hands come to those knees. From here, tuck your chin to your chest, rounding your spine. Feel your core kick on. And then let the hands come away from those knees as you roll the rest of the way down. This next one is going to be like a bridge with a little a uh, bit of an adjustment. So you're going to take the feet to touch, and then you're gonna roll onto the pinky side of your feet, almost like you're taking a Baddha Konasana with your legs, except for that your knees are going to be lifted up, that engagement. And then you'll take your hands down to your sides. From here, you'll press your hips up. Think about those knees playing open wide. So the knees are trying to press down. This will engage your glutes to lift your hips up. Think about the spine being as long as possible. Roll those shoulder blades underneath. See if you can press those knees down a little bit lower to lift the hips a little bit higher. And then exhale, slowly lower those hips down. We'll do those, that two more times, holding it a little bit longer each time. So think about getting your stance here. Those knees are opened up away from each other. We're almost taking a Baddha Konasana bound angle on our backs, but the knees are lifted up just slightly from there. And then when we lift the hips up, they splay a little bit wider apart. So exhale, inhale, lift the hips up, press those knees wide. Good, one more deep breath in. Squeeze those glutes. Can you lift the hips a little bit higher? Exhale. Hold it for one more. Inhale. And on your exhale, lower down. Whew. All right, one more just like that. Find your balance. Maybe take a windshield wiper in between with those knees. One last time through, and then I promise we're done. Feet back at that neutral position, feet together, knees open, press those hips up. Inhale here, sway those knees open, pressing down towards the ground. Feel the outside of your thighs working here. Feel those glutes, all those muscles press up even higher, sway those knees down even lower to the ground, and then exhale, lower all the way down. Good. From here, just slowly take those feet as wide as the mat and gently let those knees fall in towards one another. 
finding space to reset your pelvis here. Think about your spine being long. Think about the whole backside being flat on the mat here. So even that small little arch that naturally happens in the back, try to use your core to press it down. Find your breath. And then slowly let those knees part, heel toe them back together. Roll over to whichever side calls to you, left or right, and press yourself back up into a seat. Taking that final posture, maybe finding that blanket for underneath the hips here. Everything's coming together in this last posture here. So we'll think about a nice tall spine, the feet kiss together, right? We'll sit up as tall as we can. Take those thumbs to the inner sides of your foot and begin to peel your foot open like a book. So just the pinky toes touch. This should engage those glutes to press those knees down. Good. And then you think about that tilt in the pelvis. You're pressing the hips into the mat to tilt slightly forward. You might not go far here, but that stretch is working, pressing those hips down, pressing the knees down. Find the tilt to shine your chest forward. Belly bend in towards the spine, nice long spine, reach forward, look forward, press the hands, pull wherever the hands are to bend at those elbows. Use your biceps to try to pull you in even deeper. Yes, lay those knees down, press those knees down. Good, reach forward here. One more deep breath in, and then exhale. Let your head hang heavy. Let go of effort, let go of pulling. And just let your body hang here, using gravity to do the work. Letting go of that effort. See if you're holding on to tension anywhere else in the body that doesn't have to do with your hips opening up right now. Maybe in your jaw, unclenching. Maybe in those shoulders, just letting them relax. Maybe in the neck. Taking two to three more breaths here. Letting go of that effort. And then slowly begin to rise back up. Take your hands to the outsides of your knees, just gently, gently. Shut. From here, make your way down onto your back slowly. And then once you're all the way down, if you want to remove that blanket from underneath your hips or if you like it there, that's okay too. We'll bend the knees in towards the chest. A nice rock massaging those hips. They did a lot of work today. And then from here, just draw your right knee in towards your chest. Let your left foot plant on the mat. We're gonna find a twist, but we're gonna find a twist with um, the legs cross over one another. So take that right leg and cross it over the left. And then from here, lift the left leg up so that that knee is still bent. And then take the hands out to a T and gently twist over to the left. If this twist is too intense or too much for you, you can always uncross the legs. I find it very nice. It really stretches out that hip space that we've been working on. And we're really focusing on the hips here. So if that uh, right shoulder rolls off the ground just slightly, that's okay. Really just think about getting the stretch in the hips. And then the closer you move the knees to the body, the more intensely you'll feel that stretch along the IT band in that hip space. Finding space to relax, to settle in, to letting gravity do the work. A 
then slowly, slowly come back to center, lifting those knees up, uncrossing the leg. Plant the right foot down, bend the left knee in towards the chest. And then cross the left leg over the right. Lift the right foot up, arms out to a T, and then let the knees fall over to the right. Think about the knees falling down, letting go of that effort to hang on into the hips. It's really just trying to let go. It's okay if that left shoulder pops off the ground just a little bit. We're trying to really find the stretch in our hips. When you've found it, just breathe. Let it feel good. Think about your ribs just softening down into the mat. So the right ribs, the left ribs. Really just twisting. Finding space to open up in that hip space. And then slowly, slowly come back to center, uncross the legs, bend your knees in towards your chest and then take them out towards your armpits, towards your elbows. Maybe you stay right here, let this feel good. Think about your tailbone trying to ground down into the mat. Or maybe you find a happy baby uh, grabbing onto the outside of the heel or the feet and extending the heels up towards the ceiling. Really think about that tailbone and the hips trying to plant on the mat. That's where you feel the stretch the most. And then soften the shoulders down as well to pull those feet in. From here, maybe you straighten one leg and then the other. Maybe you just rock side to side, have a little fun. Looking at your toes, being silly, maybe wiggling the toes, thinking what happy toes, silly toes, just wiggling out in space. Knowing it's okay for a smile to cross your face in such a vulnerable position. And then slowly, slowly, when you're ready, bend those knees in towards the chest. Nice tight ball, one last time. Maybe this time even your head and shoulders lift up off the mat, squeezing as tight as you can, and then let it go. Let your arms go long, let your legs go long. Find space. For those toes to roll in opposite direction, those shoulder blades to curl underneath the body. A mindful rest after such a workout. Letting go in the jaw and the facial features. Softening in your heart, in your chest. Letting the legs be long. We'll stay here for about a minute and a half. Stillness and silence. Breathe air into those lungs, filling up all the way. And let it go. Let me begin to invite some movement back. And inviting some bigger movements back. 
And when you are ready, when it's your time, bending your knees and rolling over to whichever side falls to you, left or right. Finding that fetal position, planting your seed of intention for the remainder of your day right here and now. The intention is to be happy, be whole, and to be rested. Pressing those hands into the mat, push yourself up to a seated position. Letting those hands just come to heart center, bowing your chin in towards your chest, thinking of one thing that you are grateful. I'm grateful for my yoga practice. I'm grateful for the opportunity to share it with you guys. Taking those hands up to your forehead, letting your thumbs press against your third eye, bowing deeply to seal that practice. Namaste. Namaste.